Why is marriage not a goal? That's a question we really need to answer. Why is marriage not a goal? Goal. And why is it that, especially in the black community or just in general, the white girls sent to college to say, go, go to college, get you a ring by spring. Black girls are told, go to college, you're strong, independent, black woman, boo-boo, you don't need no man. But then we have 80% of black children in the, in the black community in a single mother's home. And you know how I feel about that? Minus widows, minus divorcee. To me, single mother is you just out here popping babies out for every man you lay with, okay? So why is it? Why is it that the second most important decision every person will ever make in their life, why is it not a goal? Why do we, why is everything else a goal except marriage? Why is getting a Chanel bag a goal? Why is getting a weave a goal? Why is buying a, ho a house a goal, but marriage is not a goal? Why is buying your first new car a goal, but marriage is not a goal? Why is getting your license a goal, but marriage is not a goal? Why is getting out of debt a goal, but marriage is not a goal? I don't understand it. Why is it that especially in the black community, marriage is not a goal, when black women talk about marriage and we want to get married, we are looked down on, we're dragged because, oh my God, I don't want to get married. Y'all want a man. Marriage is not a goal. Why not? Why is it not a goal? If marriage is the second most important decision, the person you marriage is the second most important decision you will ever make. Why is it not a goal? Why are we not preparing for the second most important decision you will ever make. And then we wonder why more than 50% of marriages end in divorce and more than 80% of wives initiate divorce. Why is marriage not a goal? That's what we want to talk about this morning really quick. I think today is Wednesday, girl. How are you? I love you. Thank you for those comments on that video I did yesterday. Listen, we are preparing for the husband profile. How many of you are ready for the husband profile? How many of you have signed up for the husband profile? We are on and popping. I am doing my interviews, my one-on-ones this morning, uh, all week. As a matter of fact, I'm all booked up. So if you have registered for the husband profile and you did not get an email from me, which is impossible because I emailed everyone, be sure to drop me an email and I will make sure I connect with you, talk to you one-on-one -on -one before the class start. Also, if you sign up for Janice Hilton Mentoring, I will be talking. If you're registered, you've chosen a membership level, I will also be talking to you uh, for at least an hour. So if I didn't get to you, if I didn't send you an email for us to connect, be sure to drop me one so that I can have a one-on-one -on -one with you. I absolutely love you. I adore you. Thank you for your love and support. If you are over at Janice Hilton Mentoring and you have not chosen a membership level, please, ma'am, please, sir, go ahead and choose a membership level because if effective January 1st, if you did not choose a membership level, you will not have access to Janice Hilton Mentoring. I've kept it open just so that uh, the, the transition can happen. But, you know, uh, okay, marriage is not a goal. Hmm. Why? I don't understand. Tell me why. There are two types of people in this world. Jesus talked about them in the uh, Gospels and in the story of the 10 virgins. How many of you remember the story of the 10 virgins? If you went to Sunday school church, we all know the stories of the 10 uh, virgins. And I remember being a little girl or a teen. It didn't make any sense to me. But as I got older, it made sense to me, the story of the 10 virgins. And Jesus made a differentiation that five were wise and five were foolish. What that tells me is that there are two groups of people in this world. Those people are the prepared and the unprepared. The, the prepared people, the five wise virgins were the virgins who had enough oil in their lamp to keep them until the bridegroom got there. And then the five foolish are the ones that didn't prepare enough or didn't prepare at all for the bridegroom. They were all waiting for the bridegroom, but five were foolish and five were, were, were wise. And so 
with the two different types of people in this world, you know, it's like the mom is that the kids turn 18. It's like, oh my God, he wants little Johnny wants to go to college. What am I going to do? And I'm like, you had 18 years to think about, to plan, to talk to little Johnny about what he wants to do with his life. But the ones of us that are wise are the ones like myself who in the dating process, I knew what I wanted for my life and I knew what I wanted for my children. So I wanted a husband that could afford us the opportunities to live a comfortable life. But also I wanted somebody who was into education and said, well, I'm going to save. I'm going to plan for my kids to go to college. And so when me and my husband got the baby's uh, social security, he was only about two or three days old. We was in the parking lot when we went to social security parking lot. And we called the financial advisor. We got this social security number. We got this social security number. Let's start the college fund right now. Why? We are preparing ourselves so that when little Michael gets to 18 or 19, you know, his birthday is late, child. 18 or 19, he wants to go to college. We're not going to be one of the foolish mamas and the daddies that didn't prepare ourselves. Let me open Lexi, please. Uh, and said, well, I don't know what we going what, what, what we going to do. Okay, we're, we're both into education, both my husband and I, and uh, we are planning and we are preparing. And so throughout his lifetime, we're talking to him about what do you want to be? You want to be president of the United States? He said, mommy, I don't know. That sounds like a lot of words. I'm going to be the boss of the whole wide world. No, you're just going to be the boss of the United States, but you will be the most powerful man in the, in the world. Oh, mommy, I don't know if I want to do that. Oh, mommy, I think I want to be a, a, a animal doctor. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I just don't like the needles, mommy. I don't like to give the needles. I think I want to be a dentist, mommy. I said, Michael, that, those are needles. It's like, oh, I don't want to be a dentist, mommy. I just can't do the needles. And so during your children's lifetime, the Bible says you are to do what? Train them up in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart. So another part of that is training them up how to live their lives. What are you going to live your life as? What are you going to do? What did God create you to do? What is, what is what are you supposed to give uh, to, to this world and to society? And so that's preparation. And so when little Michael turned 18, he has a roadmap of what he wants to do with his life because we've done the talk, we've saved the money, and all he got to do is choose the college in state, as Dave Ramsey says, choose a college in state so we can choose, we can avoid the uh, the uh, the out of state tax. But my husband say, oh, he's going to an HBCU. And so you are to prepare yourself. You know, I am amazed at the number. And then they've been, let's talk about money, right? There are two groups of women. There's one woman who will get $5,000 and another will get a $5,000 and the two will decide. The foolish woman will go ahead and get a Chanel bag. But the wise girl like myself will say, oh, wait a minute. That's how much I can put in my IRA for a year. I'm going to go ahead and invest in my future so that when I am older, I can live a comfortable life. Okay. When you prepare yourself, you say, wait a minute, one day I'm going to die. Everybody, nobody lives forever. So I'm going to have me a little bit of money to, to go ahead and bury me so my family don't have to rush and cry and fry chicken to bury me. I am still amazed in this day and time. We still have to pass the orphan plate to bury the people. I just, I, I, I just don't understand it. And so the Bible talks about foolish and wise. And I'm go talking to my ladies in my husband profile and in my membership. And one theme continues to come up. It is that they talk to their married friends and ask them, well, what should I do? What should I do for them? Oh, I don't know. Well, you know, he will save. And so I just marry him. And then we wonder why 50% of divorce end in marriage, 80% of women, that means out of every 100 couples that got a divorce, 80 of those marriages the wives are the ones that initiate divorce. And like I said in another video, I believe 
Wives initiate divorce because a lot of women choose potential. They did not marry a man who was established, who <clears throat> has a vision. They did not marry a man who they can submit to. I am amazed at the number of wives who are in the wife groups crying about not being able to submit to their husband. How do I submit to my husband? And I'm like, girl, I can't help you. Because see, to me, Submission is a before marriage decision. That is a decision you make before you marry him. So before I marry him, do I, can I submit to him? Can I trust him to make decisions for me? Do I, can I honor him? Can I respect him? Do I respect his leadership? Do I trust him to provide, to protect, and to profess his love? Can I submit to what? His vision. What is his vision. And so marriage be the second most important decision. G, your decision for Christ. Your decision for Christ is the number one most important decision you will ever make in your life because you are making a decision about your eternal salvation. We will live longer eternally than we will live here physically. We go live forever on the other side and the decision you make to accept Christ or reject him is your most important decision. The second most important decision is who you will live your life with on earth. <clears throat> so if you're supposed to spend God's intention is that you spend your whole life with this man. You don't think you should prepare for it. You don't think that's a goal. You don't think that is something you should work towards. You don't think that's something you need to prepare for. It's like going to take your driving test, right? I, I went to driving school. I hired a driver. I looked it up. Driving school, seven lessons for 500. I don't remember. It's been years ago. $500. Sir, I want to take the driving lesson. And I paid this $500, for example, took the seven classes and he took me down there to go ahead and take the driving test. And there was another young man that was doing it. And you know, he from the hood in the streets and he's driving with both of his foot and the, 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 the driving school teacher, wait a minute. He just, he just used the guy car to do the driving test. Cause you have to come with your own car. The teacher said, wait, are you using both foot? And he failed. He failed. And I went ahead and, and I, I went ahead and I passed my test. Why? Because I prepared correctly for it. The Bible talks about how the small uh, uh, animals destroy the whole bunch. It's allowing things to fester. It's it's learning how to navigate your marital life. What is the blueprint for your marriage about faith? What is the blueprint for your marriage about family? What is the blueprint for your marriage about finances? You need to have this blueprint written out so that you can choose somebody who has a similar blueprint. Our blueprint is we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. We go to church every Sunday. Okay, well, you know, it's COVID now. We're not going right now, but we go church online. Oh, we love the Lord Jesus Christ. We bring our tithes and offering to the storehouse. My husband is the provider. Uh, we bring our children to the Lord and in the fear and the admonition. We brought little Michael to the Lord to dedicate him. You need a blueprint for your marriage and for your life on earth. So you don't think that's the goal. You don't think that is something you need to work towards and you need to prepare. And we wonder why the divorce rate is so bad. And we wonder why 80% of wives are filing for divorce. And you know what I say, they marry potential. They didn't marry the man that was in front of them. They married the man who they think one day he's going to become. And what I say is marry the man in front of you. I absolutely love you. I adore you. I have a nine o'clock mentoring session this morning. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, share this out if you can. If you have signed up for Janice Hilton Mentoring and I did not get to you yet, please drop me an email. Uh, Janice Hilton Mentoring is your way of supporting me. I canceled my YouTube membership, which I'm thinking about adding a little one back. And I have a few people on my mentor and my Patreon and no, most of my people are over at Janice Hilton Mentoring. So if you have not signed up for your membership level to show me love and support, 
on a monthly basis, please go over and check it out. I don't want to hear because of James. I love you. You've been a blessing to my life. Oh my God, you help me. And I don't see you over there. Uh, the husband profile is going to be beginning in January. I think it's the, now it's to the 21st because I got, I got to wait for the girls to get paid. And then the, uh, uh, the dating book is coming very, very soon. Um, uh, early next year. I love you. Let me know what you think about why is marriage not a goal? Why do we look that? It's just a black community. It's like we detest, you know, you abhor woman who wants to be married and talk about marriage. You come over here in your angry Agnes and bitter Betty uh, feelings because I'm teaching women how to be married, how to be wise. Why not? Marriage is a picture of Christ in the church. Don't you want to have a picture of Christ and the church in your life. I love you. I will talk to you later. Let me know what you think. Bye.